Hey, this is Lee from Outback Fencing, and today we're going to show you how to install a full privacy PVC fence. So stay tuned, and we'll show you how it gets done. All right, so what you want to do now is uh, set up a string line for where you want the fence to go. Um, so what we've done for this job, we've actually got some boundary pegs and everything that we're um, that we're going off. But I've, I've put a peg here, well out of the way of where we're digging the hole, so the peg doesn't fall in. And what I've actually done here is I've actually dug our first post exactly where I want it before I've marked out any, anything else, because I know this post has to go on the corner here. But as you can see, we've run a string line all the way around the job, all the way around. Um, so yeah, so this, <clears throat> this job in particular, um, it's, uh, it's not a level, on a level uh, block and we're going to be stepping the fence as it goes down the hill um, but first what we want to do is we want to mark out uh, where the holes are going to go and to do that we've uh, cut ourselves uh, some spaces now these I've cut at 2450 um, because you want to be uh, marking the holes at 2450 centers so I've put this first post in and I've marked with a texture the center of the post so then what we do is we just move that over to the center of the post and get our spray paint and that's just where we're going to dig the hole so then we just keep going like that all the way through now when you're putting these spaces together you want to make sure they're nice and tight because we're doing 2450 centers so that's nice and tight on there and we do that and then you pick up the next one and put it next to that and you just sort of keep going all the way along uh, this job's got a gate in it, so when you come to the gate you might have a shorter panel or whatnot. But uh, yeah, at the moment that's it and we're going to start digging some holes. Alright, um, we've got a couple of posts uh, concreted in already, as you can see. Um, so what we're going to do now, it's really important that you get the spacing in between these posts spot on. So we've got our rail that we marked out with um, here on the ground and we've marked actually the centre of these posts. So with this rail, which is 2450 that I've cut, we're going to put it centre of that post and then we've worked out and we put this post down to centre of this post, if that makes sense. So then what we're going to do is we're going to get this right onto the string line and get it nice and level and where it needs to be. Then we're going to put some water in, pour some concrete around it and just sort of let that set for a little bit. And then, <clears throat> because this is not a straight run, what, um, what you can do, if it is a straight level run, you can mark all the posts um, to the bottom of the rail on this side of the post, run your string line as close to the ground as possible and imagine that the string line is the bottom of your rail. So then you can just sort of follow that mark to that string line and get it more perfect. But in this instance, we're going to be stepping the fence. So what we need to do here is you actually need to get a small little level like that and we use the spacer and it'll sit on the ground at that end and we use the level and basically get this like this and bring it up so it's level. And then the bottom of that, you want to match up with the bottom of the rail hole on the post. And then you know that you're going to have a um, that this post is going to be high enough for that step so then when it gets to that end the rail's going to be on the ground but up here it's going to be off the ground but then you know you're going to have a nice level panel hopefully that makes sense um it's a bit hard to do while it's pouring rain um to, de to describe it perfectly but um yeah that's what we're going to do here and uh yeah we're going to concrete these in and we'll go from there all right so if you're concreting these posts in uh, with the PVC post, it is okay to use rapid set just on the PVC post. But if you're going to put a gate post in, um, our one-way gate post, they've got an aluminium inside the gate post. You don't want to use um, you don't want to use rapid set for those because uh, the rapid set is going to react with the aluminium and it's going to um, it's going to do some funky things with that. So you, yeah, don't use rapid set on your one-way gate post because it's got aluminium. Rapid set and aluminium don't mix, so don't do that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, and also I wanted to mention with this, because we're stepping it, we've got slots in one side. When you're stepping it, you use the one-way post because if you use the two-way post, you're, gonna, you're already going to have a slot that's going to be in the wrong spot. So 
So in this circumstance, we have one side that's cut, you can put the rail in, but at the other end, you can either drill your own hole at the right level, um, or use some brackets, which we're gonna use uh, on this job. All right, you've, we've posted all the job, we've let these set overnight, and we're ready to put our first panel in. Now this panel in's got um, two slots on either side, so um, if you can imagine, this is gonna be sort of like what you would do for a straight run. Um, so first of all, what you wanna do is grab your, um, your bottom rail, which is gonna have an aluminium insert in it, and you wanna basically just sort of push those in all the way through, Then you want to sort of get near. Once those little clips on the rails, they click through the post, um, and then it's sort of all set in, ready to go. And then you've got your infill panels here. So basically, you'll have, you'll have two of these in your pack, which are just like these little U-channels. And they just sort of go on either end of the last panels, first and last panels. So basically, you sort of just slot them in like that, give it a bit of a tap, and that's pretty much it. So I'll, uh, we'll do this panel, and I'll completely finish it, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Now what we want to do is we've clicked them all together and every time you put one in, sort of just give it a bit of a, a tap for it to click into the groove. Now instead of having the rail up there like that on the post, you're probably better off actually, I find having a bit easier, sort of having it down the side like that. Holding this, getting behind the post with double hands and using your shoulder and just popping that through, makes it a lot easier. And then just sort of tap that down. And if you can, try and do the same thing this end. Click that in. And then you've got these U-channels. You can just sort of tap them this way to close the gap at either end. And just sort of double check that everything's all uh, clicked in together and that's pretty much it how to do a nice straight run um, then you just need to put the post caps on top they're pretty straightforward they just slip on whether you've got the English clap or uh, English style cap or the sling line cap and one other thing I wanted to mention as well is <clears throat> when you're doing a 45 degree angle you can put one post in and try and sort of cut your own holes and and um, somehow try to attach it to one post, but I find it a whole lot easier if you just double post it. So you have one post go in one direction, one post go in the other direction. So that's what we've done here. And that's what we've done in this corner over here as well. So double posting just makes a nicer finish and everything just clicks in together a lot easier rather than trying to do things on the angle. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, the next panel, we're gonna show you how, um, how to step the panel and we're gonna be using brackets, so. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a stepped panel. So first, what you wanna do is uh, get this in, and give that a good push. Now, <clears throat> you wanna find yourself a uh, small level. And just slot that down inside the, um, inside the channel. Peak out traffic. Now, where my rail's sitting is perfect there. Um, so, what I'm going to do now. 
to screw that uh, bracket off where it's going to go. Now we're going to make sure that bracket centre of the post. Now when you're screwing it to the post, you want to find yourself some nice, just sort of um, silver screws, Phillips head screws. Probably get something from Bunnings or your local hardware store. <coughs> now in the pack, they will come, they will give you some white screws and that's the ones that I use for the outside just to make sure that the rail doesn't slide out. And they just sort of pop into the side there like that. Yeah, it stops it going anywhere. you put those screws onto the post. We have some uh, little cover plugs. They just sort of pop in. Into there to hide the uh, screws. And just like the uh, the other panel that we did before, just have to be. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put the top rail in. Then what you want to do is put the bracket on top here and that just sort of slides over the top. Again, get your silver screws that you've purchased yourself. So just make that bracket nice and tight. The white screws provided just to make sure that rail doesn't go anywhere. And do the same on the other side. And that is how you do a step panel, even though it probably doesn't look step there. Um, but through the remainder of the job, you're gonna have a few drops where it actually, you'll see a significant step. Um, so the right, yeah, for instance, the top rail will probably, on this one, will probably be about here, stepping down from that one. And that's where these uh, brackets really come in handy. Um, alternatively to the brackets, um, you can route out the holes or cut them out. Um, but I find that's pretty tricky to do. Um, and using the bracket method is a whole lot easier and quicker, and it's just as strong. So. Yeah, we're just gonna use the bracket method on this job and we'll show you the finished product. All right, well, we've pretty much uh, finished all the panels for the job. Now what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna put in a uh, mailbox. This is a uh, poster uh, mailbox. So you're gonna have it all neatly all wrapped up. It's gonna have a... Um, this goes onto the back side on the other side to sort of uh, clamp it all up and then you've got the, the face side or well, the main part of the mailbox right and that goes on the front and obviously you've sort of got like this sort of flange bit here that comes in 
Now that's the measurement that you want to take is that inside box. So what we've done is we've measured that and I've, and I've allowed myself a little bit, like one or two mil. So it sits in there, um, gives you a bit of room of play to put pop it in. So I've measured 175 across and 355 down. And I've used it my level to get that all nice and neat. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, grab an angle grinder. Just going to neatly cut this with the angle grinder being careful you can actually go over um, the line a little bit because this flange is going to cover any sort of rough cuts and the same uh, with the back side of it it's going to um, cover anything if you sort of go past the line uh, in terms of going that way or that way but uh, yeah <laughs> All right, so hopefully this will, I reckon, that's actually, actually a pretty good little mailbox. Yeah, hopefully it's going to slot in there. might need when you use this on the other side come and have a look but then this bit goes over there and you sort of pull that sort of tight nice and tight and also you sort of want to make sure it's all nice and level as well so what we're going to do now put a Make sure it's nice and tight. You might need a, a second person to push from that side. Um, then you just put a couple of screws here, here and here, and then you put a couple of screws here, 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 and here. But let's have a look what they've supplied us in terms of screws. Yep, so they've supplied us with some small silver screws which will be good enough to go into the PVC. Um, but I would recommend getting maybe some steel screws to do the ones into the side, um, preferably white if you haven't got, if you've got them. Uh, but you might not always have them. But here's the keys for locking it. We'll leave them in there. But um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I can sort of show you how to do this, but I think you get the idea. And that's how you install the mailbox. All right, so what we're going to do now is install our one meter gate. Um, so key thing to do here, because these are already pre-made at one meter exactly, or a thousand mil. What you want is to make the distance between the face of this post and the face of this post. Um, well, a thousand plus 20 mil for your latch and 20 mil for your hinges. So ideally, you want about 1,040 millimeters. Um, in between here, which we've set up and got that um, all good to go. So then what we're going to do is get wet, is uh, grab a few screws out of our uh, true close lock latch, um, latch and um, hinge kit. Grab a few of these screws out of here. Now, I'd recommend putting these up somewhere just under this bottom rail, which I think looks best, but also you've got these metal inserts in here that are from the top to about here, inside the gate. So give it something to grab onto. Okay, screw those on. ones those are pretty good 
pretty heavy duty hinges. <clears throat> screws in your pocket ready to hang the door or the gate now if you're smart you can probably measure from the top of this down to here the hinge and all that kind of stuff but we're just going to sort of eyeball it as we go Get out of the range. Oh, you might need a packet or something like that when you're screwing this up. We're back into it now that the rain stops. I want to match the sort of rail, this one here, even though it's going to, it's going to be stepping there. I want the gate to sort of match this panel here. So I've sort of pr propped it up a little bit there. And then I think to bring this end in a bit. How's that looking? Not too bad. Probably got a bit of pressure. How's that looking? Alright, pretty, that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that, and now he's going to screw off these hinges. Matic out there so the door opens. Um, then to finish off the hinges, we've got these little sort of uh, things that sort of cover up the screws. Makes that sort of just click in there. Make sure it really clicks in there, otherwise it'll fall off. But once they click in, they're not going anywhere. That just sort of makes it look a lot nicer. how you put the hinges on next we'll put the latch on all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a hole into the post for the latch and you want to be able to draw a hole both sides um, so we've got a bit of a drill template here so what you're going to do is a little hole here that we're just going to make a mark that's all we need to do is just make a mark for our hole and then what I'm going to do, we've got a couple of notches here, you can see that. A tiny little mark there on that notch. Then what I want to do is level this. You're probably actually better with a, a square than leveling this. But leveling is going to be good enough for me. and put that notch to that line and mark another hole on this side and that way we can then draw a big enough hole for this latch system to work yeah. make 
sure that's right. That hole is probably about 10 to 12 mil. The instructions will say exactly what drill to use. I'm just guessing here because I've done it a million times, but probably better off to read the instructions if it's a 10 mil or 12 mil um, drill bit. Beautiful. I might go a bit more just because I can. Alright, rub those marks off. Alright, then what you want to do is determine which side this goes on. So this is going to be on this side, like that. First of all, to attach this on. So put that on. Now there's some really tiny little silver screws that go into here. And all they do is just attach this bit onto there. Screw them in. There, there you go. Pretty happy with that. Got plenty of play there. Sometimes if you make this drill, drill hole too small, it catches on here very slightly and it can really affect the way your mechanism look, latches, um, how your latch works. I've had many customers say, oh, my latch isn't working, it's not coming down, it's not locking properly. It's usually due, uh, due to um, the, uh, the hole being too small or when they put it in, instead of trying to find the center, they jam it right up like that and that's going to sort of slow the mechanism down as well. You want to try and find the center of the hole so it's not touching anything. <clears throat> then what you want to do is grab one of these boys. Now, also, you want to flip this one around for how we're opening it. So, is that right? Yep, that's right. So you'll need to determine with the little lock symbol at the top. If it's on this side, you know, if it's over here, you want to flip that around. And then once you've made the decision, which I'm happy with that, you can push that in and it all clicks in. So then you click this in, make sure you hear the click. All right, and stick that through. Now, the key with this is, is it's got to be exactly flush With there, no more, no less. If you don't do it enough, the mechanism won't open the other side of the gate. If you don't do it enough, the mechanism won't open the gate. If you do it too much, the mechanism won't lock. They can be a little bit fiddly in that regard. Now you should just chop that. Find our mark. The edges. Okay. There it is. All right. Grab a few screws. Grab your drill, stick it between your legs, and wherever else you want to do it. 
Now just pop that out like that and then you can find and work your way into that mechanism. Give it a few little test pushes. I think that's pretty good. If anything, actually, I might need to give this a little trim because it's not, doesn't seem to want to lock really easily. So I might have to give it a bit of a push. So that means that this is a little bit too long. <clears throat> I only had to cut a small bit off it, I just sort of ground it up, ground it down. <clears throat> Alright, I think we're in business now. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, see that? Those nice little locking clicks. And I'm only very gently using the key. If you have to really hard or you have to try and push this down to lock it, you know your bit's too long. If you know what I'm talking about. Alright, so. Then you gotta try and screw all this together, which can be a little bit difficult. Now, again, you wanna find the center of the hole, so. About there. Again, find the center of the hole roughly. And then, sort of just want to give that a test run again with a lot. Oh, it's so good when things work. And give it a push, see that's opening the mechanism. Successfully put a lock in. This is, this is good. So I finish screwing this off. Once you finish screwing it off, just check everything again. Because sometimes pulling it in too tight with the screws can affect stuff. But generally, I think we're all good. Alright, let's have a look. Seems to be working, which is good. Easy as that. Okay, let's pull that key out. This can't get locked. Now it's open. Now I just test the key on this side as well. That's locked. Can't open it and then it's unlocked. Beautiful. Alright, last but not least, our little catch. Again, why we put the lock up high is so we can take advantage of the aluminium piece that's in this gate. There's no aluminium bits in here. There's one at the bottom and there's one here to about 300 mil down. And it's going to rain again, but we're going to finish this off. Oh, I'm dropping my screws. that up pretty much centered with there oh. Pretty much how you do a uh, install a one meter gate with a lock latch and hinge, um, lock latch latch and hinge system, 
And uh, yeah, that's it.